Welcome back to some Bash Talk. Uh, every Wednesday, we pull on someone who's technically influential as shit. That's what his Discord role says in the uh, in the BG3 Bash Discord. This is Mr. Dalton Cates, at Dalton underscore Cates. Beautiful. Boom. That's how you follow him on Twitter. He is um, he is now working full-time for a company that we just partnered with, Mojo, right? Yes, sir. You've been there for a month, two months, three months? Three months. Three months. Yeah. Damn. At this point. Flying by. Hell yeah. Mojo's... Um, very, very interesting concept. We'll talk about that later on the show. Today, we're going to talk about Mr. Dalton's bash team. He's got a hole to dig himself out of. Okay, but we're here. Listen, like this is this is real life shit. People people dig themselves into zero and three holes, and we've got to figure out ways to overcome it. One of the hardest parts about it for the bash, I think, though, is the lineups are deep, so the waiver wire is absolutely raw. You know, so it's raw dog in you right now. But we'll talk through it. We're also going to look into some uh, trade targets that we think are good players. That You know, here's the thing. It's like week one are kind of like you don't really know how good a player is. Like, you'd have a big performance. Week two, things usually flip, and then you're like, which one's the real player? You know, week one is good. Week two is bad. And then week three starts the trend because now you have a, a bigger sample size of where players are. We're three weeks in, so now we get a better feel for positions, depth charts, like snap counts, route, you know, all that kind of bullshit. And uh, I think now is the time to start targeting players based on you know the intense research that you do. So much intense research. So Dalton, we're bouncing back. That's well, what we're doing. We're bouncing back on our big dash team right now, dude. I've I've got heaven. I've got faith in you. I think you're one of the sharper minds, despite your your record oh, right your now. Record. You're in League 16. <sighs> yeah, it's uh it's rough right now. We dropped 89 points last week. Quarterbacks are currently Mariota and Daniel Jones. We lost Trey Lance. Mariota was a nice QB3 pickup for you, though. It's nice. And I got I got Pitts in London, too. So I got the stack. Falcons okay. stack. Wow, you went you all that. in. As a Falcons fan, I know you love that. No, I hate that. <laughs> <laughs> it's fucking terrible it's move amazing. on your yeah. part. Uh, no, Mariota has absolutely... Let's just talk about him for a little bit, because he is certainly, um, I guess, overwhelmed, right? Because he was someone... Where did you get him? In, like, the 13th round or something? Yeah. Yeah. I made sure to get him as a second quarterback. Yeah, and he's been awesome. He's, like, the QB13, yeah. I, I believe, right now. He's adding... He's, he, this Atlanta offense is, like kind of fun to watch yeah. I don't want to admit it because like I know by like week seven we're gonna be like Mario is the worst quarterback <laughs> in the NFL but for right now they're fun and the reason is because they have Drake London and Kyle Pitts correct that's it and they just need to throw the ball more Marietta runs the ball a little bit Cordero Patterson too like he's kind of nice it's a nice group of like three or four skill players like yeah. the rest of our team definitely needs some work but yeah. for right now they're fun to watch yeah. they're a Madden team they're a fantasy team rest of season if you had to start one player in your flex just straight up this is normal scoring half mm -hmm. PPR is it London or is it Pitts uh do the right thing here <laughs> it's a flex yeah because obviously like i know if i asked you that question like who'd you rather have you take pits. the positional it's value in pits but yeah if you're using one because I, I think right now actually nah, you're probably not starting someone over pits if you drafted him but yeah in a flex spot like who do you think straight up scores more fantasy points half ppr rest of season uh i, I still think pits hmm. actually do um and I, th I think it's really close though and uh -huh. and the thing is Kyle Pitts in a second year second year place and have more production and for banking it from here on out what's going to happen is teams are going to they're starting to understand how good Drake London is. Naturally, their defense is going to shift towards Drake London a little bit. What happened in the first couple weeks? They had Marshawn Lattimore, Jalen Ramsey were guarding Kyle Pitts a little bit. And this this week they started focusing on Kyle Pitts a little more in terms of the offense and getting him involved a little more. The offense is going to run through both these guys, but I think at the end of the day, Kyle Pitts is just legitimately like a generational type talent that that's going to shine through. You got to crack a smile when you oh, say that to, now. <laughs> Because he's a legend, man. And the thing is, it's going to happen for Pitts, and I'm a firm believer that. He's a legend. I love he's a, that. He's a legend. He's Me a legend. and Tony were talking about this after uh, when we, after we went out Saturday night. I was like, I was like, the amount of times the word legend was thrown around. I was oh, like, yeah. I, that's going to be such a big part of my vocabulary. <laughs> yeah, right. Everyone's a legend. <laughs> Dude, he is. He is a legend. And I try, try to not use the word, you know, lightly, you know. It doesn't seem like it. He called me a legend. I think he called Tony a legend. Everyone was <laughs> That's a legend. Though. <laughs> Us and Kyle Pitts. <laughs> yeah. Let's fucking just, go. Just you three. Yeah, so so right now, I mean, you're sitting at 0-3. You're in 11th place. Love the team name, Sexual Corderell Patterson. Yeah. <laughs> One of my faves. Um, let's let's take a look at your team. Okay, so in your opinion, your biggest problem, ah, man, damn, you got like some nice pass catchers. So between like Debo, Justin Jefferson, Drake London, DJ Moore, Gabriel Davis, like that's a strong starting wide receiver plus flex mm -hmm. combination. Jeff Wilson, Michael Carter is your running backs, Mariota and Daniel Jones is your QBs. Yeah, that's so rough. that's your downfall for sure. The uh, dude, I I mean your team seems prime for a bounce back. It's tough because like Gabe Davis, DJ Moore, Justin Jefferson all like wildly underperformed this week, but you're sitting here with like two of the three top crown jewels of the waiver wire in Cleo Herbert and Jamal Williams. So 
De- DeAndre Swift seems like he's he's out for at least two weeks, and then they have the bye, so he's out till week seven. So Jamal is like a clear RB two, RB one, and that was like your uh, idea going into the draft. Is you're like a, a dude who goes really, really wide receiver heavy. You tweeted something out earlier this summer to the effect of like, if you do nothing else, like here are like three or four tips going into like your friends league or whatever league. Every year, I always get hit up for the best strategies and targets. My best and most simple advice is evergreen. Draft your first wide receiver on your bench before your RB2. Elite tight end is so important. Second year wide receivers are the hack. You'll crush just following these guidelines. Yeah. I think that's like so, so spot on. And a lot of people have this idea that like you need these RBs to fill Mm -hmm. up. The problem is like once you get to RB2, most of them in the same way that we think of late round quarterbacks being like replaceable you're getting rb2s off the bench like you're able to kind of like replenish them weekly or just have someone random that kind of hits like james robinson i was telling you was my 15th round pick in the e-town get down now he's like my rb1 over nashi harris you know that's the way things work and wide receivers a lot of people like say oh they're so deep this year like i can get like russell gage i can get like this player and it's like they're just not good though like you say that in theory but in practice a lot of these guys end up flopping so if you go and take four wide receivers even if one's your bench guy like they're going to end up being your flex spots they're going to end up performing giving you 10 12 points a week where a lot of times you get these shitty rbs who are giving you like five to six points a week so i thought that was awesome fucking advice and it was something that i actually like kind of followed this year and it's it's worked well um and you did it in the bash and i'm surprised your team is sitting at own three I, th- I think you're i think you're going to be good though i think so too i think so too and, and, and the, the entire you know, theory behind it has actually worked out really well with my batch team. I didn't draft any running backs. My running backs are Jeff Wilson, Michael Carter, Raheem Mostert, Jamal Williams, Khalil Hooper. Like, that's actually a pretty good... It's like exactly how you do zero RB. Yeah, Yeah. I didn't draft any of them. So now when I have, like, guys like Julio Jones and Elijah Moore as wide receivers on my bench, and I'm drafting, like, Drake London. I drafted Drake London and Julio Jones before I started drafting, like, any of these running backs. And it's like, those guys are, like, sitting on my bench now, too. And I, I can plug them in during bye weeks. That's a big thing, too, is these teams during the bye weeks are going to absolutely crush because you're just right. seamlessly plugging in these wide receivers, whereas everybody else is kind of struggling to, to fix those positions. Um, there's so, a lot of, yeah, there's a lot of guys that go, like, running back heavy, and they're like, oh, yeah. my starting lineup looks good. And then by the time, like, week seven comes around, they're wide receiver two, and they're, like, first two flex plays are, are like fucking AJ Green and you know just just prayer shots into the lineup. So I agree, it's much easier to get real depth at wide receiver if you're drafting them consistently because players are actually good. Yeah. By the time you start drafting running backs in like fifth, sixth round, it ends up being Travis yeah. Etienne, Josh Jacobs, Josh yeah, Jacobs yeah, is yeah that you're like oh god like I hope they put up yeah, like you, nine you're, points. You're going me. to the bathroom throwing up during your draft while you're doing it, but your lineup looks cool for week one, you know. So you got to give them that get, get some good projected points out there. Yeah, but. what are you doing on the waivers this week? Are you putting uh, bids in? Seems kind of nice. <laughs> you can go hit Brian Hoyer. <laughs> you I do might, need a QB, bro. I, I might, I might need to hit something real quick. Uh, yeah, I think, I think Hoyer's the guy. I need to. Just oh shit! It's how bad it is. They got sexual patterns. <laughs> 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 we love that. <laughs> um, and we got a uh, yeah. I mean, that's things. Quarterback, quarterback's a big thing. I mean, when you have trotting out Daniel Jones and Marcus Mariota in a super flex league, it's, I mean, it's absolutely disgusting. Yeah, and I, and I think one of the reasons your strategy will end up reverting back to you know racking up wins for you is that because this league is 10 starters 10 bench spots no defense or kickers the waiver wire is so bare so you needed to draft well so it's like if you don't have depth you're when those bye weeks come yeah you're in a fucking world of hurt and it feels like you have enough depth depth right now um you do have richie james sitting there on the wire some random yeah all right i got great george we're good yeah uh, honestly george has been a beast all right so that's bash let's move on to some trade targets so I'm in a, a league called the E-Town Get Down with my high school buddies. I haven't won in a long time, but I guaranteed a championship this year. Uh, but my team, yeah, I'm 3-0. I'm in first place right now. There we go. So I'm sitting there. Nice. However, like, I don't feel great about my running backs, which, you know, this whole podcast has been like, who gives a fuck, you know? I have Najee Harris. I have James Robinson, which is a mm-hmm. godsend. But I had a similar strategy to you with the wide receivers. So I have, like, Mike Evans, Mike Williams, Cortland Sutton, nice. Hollywood Brown, Mark Andrews, tight end premium. Um, I even have Alave on the bench. Filthy. Yeah, just awesome shit. But I have like my running backs again, Najee, James Robinson, Damian Harris, J.K. Dobbins. Like not a lot of players I could really trust mm-hmm. on a week to week basis. So what I'm thinking, have you watched like, I mean, Greg Dorch guy, the yeah. Arizona offense yeah. is brutal. I'm a Cardinals fan. So it's. <laughs> Are you? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I like, I want to like gauge my eyes out every single time I watch a Cardinals game this year so far, other than the, you know, a nice comeback, but we need Hopkins back. We need Hopkins back to do something for this offense. And right now, it's just... It's so bad. I'm actually kind of worried that, like, 
I don't, I don't know if Hopkins does much for you guys. I almost feel like it's just going to be one of those things where Hopkins is back, let's just force feed him targets, and like it's going to make the offense stale. Mm-hmm. You know, the good thing is I think I think Marcus Brown's actually a pretty good receiver. Okay, and him and him and Kyler. So so I've have some buddies who are down at Cardinals camp, and all they kept telling me, dude, Kyler and Marcus Brown are going to light it up this year. We saw like him pepper him with targets. He had like 14 catches for 140 yards, which is crazy. And like they've been together at Oklahoma, we've seen him do it before. Like I still think Hollywood's a freaking like a stud, and having another good wide receiver alongside him, I think will help him out. Because who are cornerbacks going to play? Are they going to put them on Marquise Brown or DeAndre Hopkins? My guess is DeAndre Hopkins, and then that leaves more opportunities for Marquise Brown. Could open things up, but that could be me as a Cardinals fan being extremely biased. I I so agreed with that take preseason. I'm still I have a lot of Hollywood. Like he's my yeah. he's my flex two in this league, so I'm like feeling really good about it. I was thinking of there's okay, so it's like Devil Angel here, right? It's like you're. If it ain't broke, don't fix it. Why are you fucking your team up when you're 3-0 top of standings? The other part of me is like, I got to start gearing up, I think, for when D-Hop comes back and, like, one of these wide receivers falls off. So I was thinking of doing something where I send, like, Hollywood for Brees Hall right now, you know? And I don't know necessarily if I win that trade right now, but I think Brees over the second half of the year, I mean, he's already basically taken over the pass-catching role there, and he will take over the early down role, I think, by, like, week eight or something like that. I think he'd be a player down the stretch. We'll see what this offense looks like when Zach Wilson comes back. Thoughts on that? Like you're obviously a Hollywood Brown guy, so like sell high is that off is that off your table right now? I I like the idea of getting Brees. Okay. It's just for Hollywood, I probably wouldn't because I think he's in that tier of wide receivers that are going to be consistent week to week and have that blow up potential. Like he has 30, 40 point upside on any given week, um, and those wide receivers are really hard to find. But yeah. for Brees, I think he's the perfect trade target because I, yeah, that's why I'm like one. this is perfect because this guy will probably accept it. Like I don't even know if it. it a lot of people like always try to finesse in trades and always right. like, I need to fucking trade rate people. It's <laughs> yeah. like, you could also just make a trade, you know, yeah. and be like, this kind of solidifies my roster a little more. Cause I do have a lave on the bench, yeah. but it does feel like I have Dobbins. So I know I'm going to need to wait for like three yeah. or four weeks before he's really anything. I do. I do like having a lave as my fifth guy. So if something yeah. does happen to one of these guys or it's a bye week or whatever, I can kind of like throw him in and feel good about it. But I was toying with that idea. I wanted to get your take on it. Cause I, like, I'm just worried that when D hop comes back, Marquise goes down to like a seven or eight target guy. And like a lot of those targets so far this year, at least haven't been super valuable. He's been like a volume play to be realistic. Like they're not connecting on their deep throws, but one or two of those, I guess, you know, gets Can't to change some things, you know, right. It for sure does. So maybe, yeah, maybe I'll sit tight on that right now and see, uh, where it goes a week from now. Um, but going off of trade targets, you know, some of the guys that I think you and me both like going into the season, we got Kyle Pitts, we got like Travis yeah. Etienne, Elijah Moore too. Mm-hmm. Are these guys that like you've seen enough where you're like, I don't know if I want to go out and get them. Are there any like trade targets that either that you're trying to sell high right now or you'd like to buy low? Um, the guys I want to buy low, I, I have everywhere, so I can't, I can't buy them. It's Elijah Moore and <laughs> Kyle Pitts. So. Uh, okay. <laughs> but like, I, I think I'm, there's a lot of positive signs for both of them. I think Kyle Pitts was s- such a bigger buy low last week. Kind of People kind of saw just him blow up in the first half yeah. um, and kind of saw his potential. But that's like, like, I don't even think it was that good of a game for Kyle Pitts. To no, be honest. And it was okay. Game, like, he dropped 163 yards as a rookie. Um, he just has that profile that this guy's just going to have games that people are like, holy shit, like, this is Kyle Pitts. This is who he can be. Um, so he's he's not anywhere touching his potential right now or what his value is going to be, in my opinion. And then I think Elijah Moore is just a freaking guy to get. He's ran the most routes out of any wide receiver in the league right now. Garrett Wilson um, is a superstar. Zach Wilson's coming back. Like, Joe Flacco's played terrible. And we don't know if Zach Wilson's going to be good, but what if Zach Wilson is somewhat better than Joe Flacco? And what happens now when teams understand Garrett Wilson is this really good receiver they're going to go and give him a little extra coverage. Elijah Moore, I was watching the game. I was at the game. Elijah Moore had so many times where he was literally open, and there was, like, nobody within five yards of him for, like, you know, a 10-yard slant or whatever, and he's just sitting there in the zone. So fuck. That, that's like, the thing. I'm like, yeah. Elijah Moore's so good. Yeah. Like, why is he continuously putting up dud after dud after dud. And it's like, yeah, it's Joe Flacco. But there's yeah. other like guys in his offense that are not like yeah. Tyler Conklin's been good. Garrett Wilson's obviously been awesome. All the running backs are eating. So it's like, why is Elijah Moore the fucking odd man out here when he's arguably the best player on the fucking yeah. team? You know? It's crazy. I think this this is the biggest difference between good players and good offenses and good players and bad offenses. Guys like we've seen guys like DJ Moore, right? We know DJ Moore's a superstar, right? But he's in the Panthers offense. So these guys have lower weekly floors than these other really good players and good offenses. And we're just seeing that right now. We're seeing it with Kyle Pitts. We're seeing it with Elijah Moore. And some of these guys, it just happens. But they're still going to have their games. They're still going to get their targets. At the end of the year, we're going to look back over the entire season and be like, okay, like that was a pretty good year. But there were some some bumps and things along the road because 
we're only three weeks in the season. Yeah, like, I know. So much, so much can happen, and so much will happen. So that's that's like yeah. the most annoying part about doing fantasy stuff is like in the summer, everyone likes to talk about overall rankings. Like this yeah. guy finishes a wide receiver thirteen last year, but then once you're in the season, you're like he's too inconsistent. It's like you can't plan yeah, consistency, right? dude. Like if a guy's going to finish his wide receiver thirteen, be happy that you have the wide receiver thirteen. That's it. Yeah, put him in your lineup. If you think Elijah Moore right now to the end of the season is a top 20 wide receiver, then you play him accordingly. You don't exactly. worry about the first three weeks. Like, it's just, it, the consistency is a fucking fake thing. In oh, dude, it's like Tyler Lock, dude. Tyler Lock will sit there, get you five points, like three, four straight weeks, but that one week he's dropping you 45 points. And you know what you're doing that week? You're winning because of Tyler Lockett. And you can still yes. win weeks with Tyler Lockett and five points because if you have somebody else on your team dropping 30 banger or 40 banger, like, Look, it's only, it's only a few key guys that you really need week in, week out that really help your team win. Yeah, and people are trying to play fucking whack-a-mole out here. Yeah, it's right. like, don't do it. Just leave <laughs> them in. And that was something like... Just ride it. Yeah, like, I, I remember talking about this so... I don't talk about kickers whatsoever anymore. When I first started and, like, actually selling products yeah. and stuff, there were a lot of people who are like, what do I do with kickers and drafts? Yeah. I'm like, you draft a kicker on a good team with an offense that's going to score, and then you don't take him out. If he has six points the first three weeks yeah. in a row... The minute you sit him is the minute that he pops. Yeah, just leave him in there for fucking ever, dude. Yeah, all right. So Elijah Moore, we got Kyle Pitts. Um, just good players. Yeah, just target, target good, good players, players with good <laughs> good profiles that'll eventually 100%. break out. I'll get I'll get behind that for sure. Uh, yeah. Let's talk about Mojo a little bit. Yes, yeah, let's talk about some players on there. You know what's crazy when you look at these? I love it's so beautifully fucking set up on their app. Look at twenty four hours. Look at one week. It's yeah, like it's skyrocketing crazy. up. One month is interesting because about a month ago he was at what, thirty two, fifty, whatever. Mm -hmm. He dips down all the way to thirty after the injury. And now he's spiking back up because people are expecting him to get back on the field soon. Right. I don't like <laughs> did they expect Joe Flacco to just take over as the career start the franchise? I think there is something in the back of their minds that just saw how bad Zach Wilson played last year and saw Mike White and Joe Flacco actually be somewhat productive in the offense. That, like, we didn't know how serious Zach Wilson's injury was going to be. And if Zach, if Joe Flacco, like, played well with those weapons, there was this potential maybe for them to, you know, ease Zach Wilson in and not That's rush insane. him back from injury. But, yeah, no, Joe Flacco sucks. Yeah, you, you just went into, like, um, <laughs> what is it? what is it called when, like, actors, like, there's like a, a method actor where you like literally pretend to be the person. <laughs> that was like you like being a crazy, a crazy Jets fan or something right there. You like went into your mode. So Zach wasn't coming back. He's priced at uh, 32, whatever it is. Yeah, 32.51. 32.51. Um, I don't know if I consider that a buy. I, listen, I, I said it like the first promo video we did. I was like, I want all the Kenny Pickett. I think he was like yeah. 13 bucks at the time. He's up to $18. Mm -hmm. Quarterbacks are a premium on Mojo if you're investing into them. And because they can go all the way up to like, you know, over a hundred dollars. A lot of them, even like the mid tier guys are really settling in around 50 to $60. Mm -hmm. And these younger dudes, Zach Wilson's at 32, 50, Kenny Pickett's still at 18. We know Kenny Pickett's going to get on the field. Once he does, his shit is going to skyrocket up. So looking at how like, let's compare Kenny Pickett at 1790 to Zach Wilson at 32, 50. It's almost yeah. double that. And Zach yeah. Wilson really hasn't proven anything. Do you like Zach Wilson on Mojo right now? No, no, no. Cause, cause I, th I think the question you have to ask yourself, do you think Zach Wilson's good? And if you do think he's good, and you think he's going to get the second contract, he's a massive buy. Yeah. Because that's all about getting to the second contract. You can get to the second contract. You can accrue more seasons. You can... That's how it is. It's like they look at the career trajectory. Career for Zach Wilson. So, so right now, you're, you're basically at this very interesting like pivot point when it comes to Wilson, right? It's like, do we think the weapons are going to elevate him enough to where he's a somewhat competent quarterback to where he's going to be either a extended, picked up the option, or go to a new team and have starting seasons in his fifth, sixth year. Then he's a buy. Otherwise, if you just think he's going to be out of the league and you think that the Jets at some point are going to realize that he might not be the quarterback they envisioned, then he's a sell because he's not going to be able to accrue his yeah. mojo value. I can kind of see him having like a career similar to Mitch Trubisky. Yeah. Where he was picked up really early. Like you see athletic flashes, but you're like, this guy kind of stinks. Like he's not very accurate, but he'll stay around the league for a long time. I don't know what that means. What's Mitch Trubisky at? Mitch Trubisky is at 26.99. 26. So that's even lower than Zach Wilson yeah. is right now. Mitch exactly. has been around for a minute and, and he'll, he'll and get a lot of chances. And like basically a third of Mitch's value is still future value. So they're still expecting a third of that. That's kind of crazy. Potential be in play right there. I can't imagine you starting for more than like six to right. eight. Right. No, games. imagine imagine once Kenny Pickett goes on. That's that's gonna crater a little bit. That um, is kind of wild. So it's one of those things. I think it's a very good comparison and and you could tell in his mojo price that they're like actually pretty similar in that realm but mm -hmm. there, there's this like weird outside chance that zach wilson somehow is good and i don't want to yeah you don't want to write him off yet because exactly. this sophomore qb class is like weird you know yeah. it's like what we all thought originally it's like trevor lawrence is the hit for sure yeah. you have one one year and everyone's like whoa this is wacky yeah. like, i don't <laughs> think so anymore now it's all restored back to order yeah so so he's, he's definitely an interesting one for sure but uh, 
Right. I, think, I think the I think the weapons help him out a ton. Like yeah. Garrett Wilson and Elijah are just that's what stuff. I mean. It's like yeah. it's like it's like Zach Wilson might be bad, but Jets are going to do everything in their power yeah. to, to make sure they find out. Right. You know, like exactly. that's that's where Case it comes Keenum, out. Case Keenum had like freaking Adam Thielen and uh, Stephon Diggs. They go to the NFC Championship game. Like who knows if he can be like somewhat competent? I think that's that's the biggest key. Yeah. Is any other key. any other guys on Mojo you're looking to short long that you love Daniel right Jones, now? Their price. Daniel Jones short. Daniel Jones short. Yeah, Daniel Jones short. Yeah, I can't believe the Giants have been running that guy out for four <laughs> to five years as their starting quarterback. <laughs> it's unbelievable. His price went down a 7.43% uh, yesterday. Jeez. Um, He's at 25. How much yeah. is future? You still got like half of it yeah, future. Yeah, basically have it, have its future right now, which is crazy to me. And I did some research, and I looked at quarterbacks who didn't get their options, either options picked up or get extended, and they average 11 starts for the rest of their career afterwards. Really? Yes. A great stat for fucking Mojo. It's crazy, right? So it's like Say yeah. that say that one more time. Yeah. For top ten quarterbacks who have been in a contract year and have not gotten extended or picked up their option for the future with the same team the rest of their career, they've averaged eleven starts. And crazy. Daniel Jones has half of his money. And there's only banked. two there's only two quarterbacks to have like over twenty starts. Alex Smith and Michael Vick, and they're both first overall pick. Daniel Jones is sixth overall pick. I think it's pretty clear. Sixth overall pick didn't deserve to be right? sixth overall pick. Yeah, <laughs> exactly. wow, that's great. So, yeah, I mean, you're basically, he's played three seasons in the league, and they're expecting, based on his future value, to probably play like three more seasons in the league. Jeez. And I think that's probably unlikely to happen at this point. You love to see it. Especially with the new regime, too. That's the main thing. The new regime comes in, they can kind of get their guy, like they can feel out Daniel Jones this year. They're not tied to him next year. They want to go get a guy like, a day ball and uh they better stop fucking winning if they want to, <laughs> if they want to get a guy in the draft. Imagine the Giants were three zero after last night. What a travesty that would be. Oh, dude, it's a good time to be in New York, I guess. It's always a good time to be. In New York. What do you mean? You remember Saturday night, motherfucker? No <laughs> bars. All right, uh, that's gonna wrap it up. Dalton, thank you for joining us. Thanks, for representing me. Mojo. If you are in New Jersey, you can go play Mojo right now. If you want to just go check out the prices, you can go download the app anywhere it's in the app store um working on the android i believe but yeah. it's available for ios right now link will be down below if you have any questions for dalton make sure you're going to follow him dalton underscore kates that's it we'll link anything else that we missed down below drop some comments like subscribe all that shit people on youtube tell you to do and uh and we're out of here all right Jesus. let's go drink Thank <laughs> you.